Hey, what's going on guys? Maldiva here and today I'm going to be bringing you my demonology PVP guide. This is mainly going to be focused on arenas and solo shuffle. So if you take this, play the build, play it the way that I play it, you should be successful just like I am with this. So I'm going to go over every talent and kind of briefly explain why I choose it. So first up is going to be Feldom. It's a very important talent because if your pet ever dies, you're going to be able to insta summon it or basically insta summon it because no one's gonna ever let you hard cast it in the battlefield. We have Demonic Circle, that is our major mobility on a short cooldown, so you definitely wanna pick this up. You can escape danger or even teleport offensively into the fight. Demon Skin is gonna, it's part of uh, the talents that make us very tanky, so Demo is a very, very tanky spec. You see we're gonna be picking up all these talents to reduce our damage taken and soul leech absorption, all that kind of stuff. Because the same thing goes over here with Fell Armor. So it reduces damage taken by 3%. And Soul Leech, when it absorbs damage, 10% is going to be taken, absorbed, and spread over 5 seconds. Curse of Enfeeblement, these are going to be really important. We're going to be pulling um, a couple of talents that play off of this. Because we... Basically, Demo, you want to be very annoying. You want to disrupt them. You want to reduce damage and just control the battlefield. Manipulate the battlefield, and that's how you're going to win the game. Then we pick up Coil instead of Howl. I like Coil because it, it's an end cap, so you can Coil them during your big Tyrant go, and they cannot escape, and it also heals you as well. The Howl, you can't really do that. It's just going to break, and if you fear them, your pets are going to stop attacking. Next up, we have Amp Curse, so that's going to play into the Curse of Enfeeblement. So you're going to be able to Amp. This is huge right now because of the Rep Pallies. Rep Pallies everywhere. Demo is pretty good at dealing with them because we can amp Curse of Weakness and then they're unable to crit. This is huge. So that is going to be the way that you want to counter the Rep Pallies right now. And then we pick up Demonic Embrace. 10% Stamina. We scale pretty well with Stamina. A lot of our abilities and even pet health is from Stamina. So you want to get as much as possible. And then we have Attack Speed to Primary Pet. We definitely want to buff the pet. You're going to see later on there's a talent that we do to buff the main Felguard because he's going to be doing a lot of damage now with these new talents they added. And then same thing here. We get damage done by primary pet by 5%. So we get attack speed, damage done. Very, very, very important. You want that as Demo where you're big on pet damage. And then we have increases you and your pet's max health. So that's going to keep us alive and also our pets alive longer. And here I am picking up the reduced cooldown on Amplify because as I said earlier with the Rets, you want this up as much as possible. So make sure you see Ret Pallies, you have this Amp Curse of Weakness to not allow them to crit because the crits are why they're you know completely obliterating people. So you want to take that out of their toolkit. And then here we get Sweet Souls. This increases your uh, Hellstone. I mean, sometimes I don't pick this, but... There's really no other good option. I'm basically using this to get down to the, the lower talents. That's pretty much all it is. You could probably even remove that. I know I've taken it off in some builds. And then we have Gateway. This is going to be our major mobility on the longer cooldown. It's going to help you gate in or even place a gateway for your teammates to escape. Then we have Dark Pact. So this is going to be kind of the lower cooldown uh, defensive that we have. You kind of want to throw this out there very early. I'll, I'll talk about it later in the guide when we go over rotation and stuff. But yeah, this is going to be our major defensive and it scales off of health. So the more health we have, the bigger shields and absorptions we get. And now strength of will, I go this over dark accord because you want that bigger damage reduction. Normally in solo shuffle, you're only getting off like one wall per game because the games are so short. So you want to have that increased damage reduction. And then we pick up Shadow Fury. I think it's kind of nice to just have this, the access to the stun when you need it. I mean, Demo has a lot of stuns, but maybe you'll want to stun a third target because I'll usually Axe Toss one, Fel, um, the cooldown Felguard, Axe Toss another. So you can have this for maybe when you're triple fearing the healer and you can Shadow Fury him off because you're normally going to use your Axe Toss on the kill target. And then over here, I go for Frequent Donor. I like the reduced cooldown on Dark Pack, but I do also see people go for Icker. So the sacrifice is only 5% of current health. I haven't really tried Icker, but I'm just a big fan of Frequent Donor because I'm using this Dark Pack pretty much on cooldown. Now over here, we got a new talent. Wild Imp damage is increased by 20%. So you definitely want to pick that up. You'll see your Wild Imps on your damage breakdown. will be pretty high now with the patch. 
And then I skip over these Shadow Bolt. We're not going to be pressing Shadow Bolt with this build. And I don't get any of these talents. I don't see them very important. Fell Synergy. This one's kind of in the talks too because people are saying it doesn't do much. I mean, I didn't really see anywhere else to put the point. Maybe you could take the point, I guess, and put it into teachings. I've been considering doing that. But yeah, we'll see. Those are kind of the, the points that you can move around. Maybe Fell Synergy, Sweet Souls, put it in the teachings. That could be an option. But for now, I just have it in Fell Synergy. It's whatever. Soul Link, 10% of damage you take is taken by your pet. So this is that what plays into the big part of Demo being tanky. We're going to split 10% of the damage to the pet. So this is huge. And then we have Synergy. So you'll be able to grant either the demon will grant you 10% increased damage or you'll grant the demon 10% kind of just goes back and forth so it's a nice little damage buff I'm specting a profane so when I get under 35% the soul link is going to be increased by an additional 10% so now when I'm low because you, you know in solo shuffle you'll be low a lot of the times this damage reduction since damage reduction is so high value especially in solo shuffle this will save you a lot of the time so that's why i choose to pick that and then we have soul conduit so each shard you spend has a 10 percent chance to be refunded not really high chance but it allows us to pick the talent that's connected to it which i'll go over after this one over here i'm specting an inquisitor's gaze they recently buffed this you'll see this is kind of high up on your damage breakdown it varies kind of you know fight to fight but sometimes you will see this thing very high up because they just recently buffed it by a lot so definitely want to be playing that. And then Soul Burn. This is going to add extra utility to a lot of your spells. As you can see, it amplifies Teleport, Gateway, Health Funnel, Health Stone. So you definitely want to have that to unlock um, the extra abilities on those. All right, now getting into the main spec talents. So here we have called Dreadstalkers. That's going to be um, a part of like your main, main rotation. So you'll see we'll be rotating through the Dreadstalkers pretty much on cooldown. And then we pick up Demon Bolt. This is going to be a huge for our shard gen. You're going to see our build is big on generating shards with Demon Bolts. I don't press Shadow Bolt pretty much at all because of this build. So I'll, I'll go more into that when we get to the rotation. Next up, we have a Dread Lash. So when your Dreadstalkers charge in, their Dread Bite attack now hits all targets. So this increases our cleave and it also increases the damage of the dread bite the dread stalkers do a ton of damage and there's ways to also buff it and then this one felgar deals 20 percent more damage and takes 10 percent less damage that's kind of like a, a no-brainer talent you definitely want that over here i know some people play soul strike but now we are i'm testing out vile fiend i really love the vile fiend because they even just recently buffed it this is on fire school so you can bait kicks on this and it will not lock you out on your other abilities. That's the cool thing about this. Fire school, you can bait out kicks and it's really good for buffing the tyrant. And it lines up pretty well with it. So you just always use it with the tyrant. You'll have every other where you won't use it with the tyrant. And then we pick up demonic strength. So we get the big Felguard spin on the target. It's going to be really good for our burst and setup every minute. We have From the Shadows. So Dreadbite causes the target to take 20% additional Shadow Flame damage. So we'll get that buff up and buff our other abilities on the target. We have Shadow Bite. So when you your summon demons fade away, they increase the damage of your Demon Bolt. This one's not that big of a deal. I mean, Demon Bolt's not hitting very hard. So I, I just picked this up because we needed it to get to the other talents. Carnivorous. So the Dreadstalkers attacks have a 10% chance to trigger an additional dread bite so that'll kind of keep up with the consistent damage with the dread stalkers making them do even more we have fell and steel fell storm and dread bite deal 10 percent additional damage so buffing that bite and also the blade storm definitely want that now over here power siphon some people do not play power siphon but with this build i love power siphon i get my opener instantly compared to other demo locks that aren't playing it and i could just get the tyrant out right away and then whenever I need shards, I could just sacrifice the imps, get the two charges of the demonic cores, and have easy access to shards without casting shadow bolts or relying on doom. Now here, inner demons, this kind of ties into it. So you passively summon a wild imp every to fight for you for every 12 seconds. And in combat, you also have a 10% chance to summon an additional demon. So we're going to get random pets 
But then the biggest part is the wild imp because then you, you can press the power siphon at any time before the fight starts, before you hand a Gul'dan, and you'll have access to the demonic cores. And now moving over here, we have Grimoire Felguard. Two minute cooldown summons another Felguard that stuns the target and also does damage. This is what you use to set up for your opening tyrant, and we also use it to cross stun so we can pull it out without interrupts interrupting our, our cast on that tyrant. Now here, Dread Calling, this is a big one. Each soul shard spent on Hand of Gul'dan increases the damage of your call Dreadstalkers. So as we're free casting more and more and the Dreadstalkers is on cooldown, this is stacking up. And then when you unleash that call Dreadstalkers, they're going to be doing more damage based on how many Hand of Gul'dans each shard that was spent on them before you uh, casted it again. Now Doom, I know some people are kind of weird about Doom. Some, uh, they don't feel very comfortable pressing it. It feels pretty useless. I like it. I don't really prioritize it too highly. But when I can, I have free globals. I put these on the targets. I have them rolling just so I have those random uh, soul shard generations coming in. Because remember again, I am trying to not press Shadow Bolt at all. Now here, Demonic Meteor. Uh, this could be also a talent that some people spec out of. So Handle Dan deals 5% additional damage and... Has a 5% chance per shard, though, of refunding a shard. This is the big thing. Because we're going to be hand, hand of Gul'danning a lot. And then also the 4 set um, has a chance to make it instant. So it makes it super, super easy. And that's why we play this build to constantly kind of go through and cycle the instant hand of Gul'dans. So you don't have to open up your cast bar and uh, risk getting kicked on hand of Gul'dan. Because that's not what you want to do. Now, Imp Gang Boss. Summoning a wild imp has a 30% chance to summon an Imp Gang Boss. So it deals more damage. So you definitely want that. I cycle through them a good amount. I mean, sometimes they could be kind of rare, but it's nice to have that additional damage because we're going to be summoning imps like crazy with this build. So you definitely want to have all, of, all the talents that are kind of buffing that and bringing out even more powerful pets for summoning imps. So Dreadstalkers has a 100% chance to summon an additional. This one it, a must have. You'll have another Dreadstalker instead of just one. You definitely want two of them. And then we have the Tyrant. This is going to be the big damage cooldown. This is where all the damage happens. The Tyrant does big damage, but as you can see, when you pull him out, increase the damage of all other demons by 15%. So this is very, very important. As you'll see, we're going to get talents that buff it even more. And then over here, Felgar deals an additional 20% damage. Soul Strike now deals 20% of its damage. That's if you're specced into it. I'm not really specced into it, but we get the 20% additional damage on the Felgar, which is pretty good because you're, you're going to see the later talent at the bottom, which buffs it a lot. Now, Soulbound, we get five shards on summoning the Tyrant. This is pretty awesome. So you burn all your shards, pull out the Tyrant, boom, you get an instant reset, five shard generated instantly. Definitely want that. I'm going expendable. So when the imps expire or die, your other demons are inspired and gain 1% additional damage, stacking up to 10. So I'm constantly, constantly cycling through that. And I pretty much always have this buff up, which is nice. Then Infernal Command. When your Felguard is active, your imps and Dreadstalkers deal 10% additional damage. So building up into the big philosophy of the pets doing damage, you want this talent. So they're just all doing more because your Felguard is always going to be active. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully press not die in. Now here we get Reign of Tyranny. So this is going to buff the Tyrant. So Demonic Tyrant deals 50% additional damage. Now your pets are going to grant stacks. So active Wild Imps grant one stack. Greater Demons grant three. Tyrant deals 7% additional damage for each stack. You'll see that there's a number on the Tyrant that is from this talent. And you can, you'll be able to basically judge 7% uh, per stack is um, the added damage that's going to be on the Tyrant. And then last but not least, we have the new talent, Immutable Hatred. So when your primary Felguard's Legion Strike damages only one target, its damage is increased by 120%. That's the big part of this thing. Your primary Felguard deals 3k physical damage after auto attacking the same enemy three consecutive times. That one doesn't really do too much damage. You'll see it on the breakdown. It's kind of low. But the first part is the big part. So now 
we have benefits from stacking because you know the dreadstalkers they cleave but now we also have this if they decide to spread out so we're it's stack and you get cleaved or now if you don't stack you're gonna get destroyed by the fell guard and I, i've tested this talent and not taken it the, there's a pretty big difference in the legion strike damage with the fell guard all right now we are gonna go over the pvp talents so as you can see these are my kind of default talents that I'll use for solo shuffle mainly, depending on the comp that I'm fighting. I'll usually swap out like one talent, so that'll be the first one. We have Precog. This talent is amazing when you're fighting into cleaves or, you know, two to three kicks on the enemy team. Because you know they're all looking out to kick you. They do not want you to get the Tyrant out and also like spamming Fear, Hand of Gul'dan. So if you can fake the kick, get precog and summon a tyrant then this is like amazing coverage and allows you the ability to pull the tyrant out because it's pretty difficult when you're getting trained and it also gives you 15 percent haste which your pets are affected by that but if i'm not playing precog then i'll spec in a call fell hunter the reason i'm not prioritizing it as much is because it's now a one minute cooldown it got nerfed so it's it's not really that big of a deal a lot of healers don't even cast too nowadays depending on if it's like a r shaman misweaver and solo shuffle they're barely cast and they're using all instants for the most part. So then we got Fell Obelisk. This is huge to drop on your Tyrant Grow. Increase the attack speed by 20% and reduce the cast time of spells by 20%, empowering you and your minions within 40 yards. You gotta keep that in mind. This is buffing you and your pets. And then Master Summoner is a must have. Dreadstalkers are instant casts. You don't wanna be casting that. So definitely an important talent to have. All right. I'm going to go over my gear setup real quick, and then we will get into the rotation. So for demo, I pretty much just go haste verse. The verse, you, you definitely want that in PvP, you know, because it's going to reduce the damage you take and then also increase damage. So very important PvP stat. And then haste. Playing without haste just feels awful. I love haste. It feels amazing in PvP. So that's why I play it. But now my gear setup. So I'm using the normal conquest helmet just for the haste verse i am using lariat on the neck piece so this will proc um a certain stat depending on the gems that you have in here so i'll proc haste and it's cut in half in pvp so you'll get about you know 200 225 from that but the the big thing is the secondary stats you can see high haste we want the high haste and that's why we're playing it and then four set is very crucial for demo so you see the two set demon bolt and fell storm increased by 20 percent and then four set demon bolt has a chance to make your next hand of Gul'dan instant and deal 150 percent increased damage the big thing is making it instant so you don't have to uh, risk opening your cast bar so that's why we love the four set so much you can see here's our cloak we got homebound speed on it my gems in here we got the the verse gems and haste i probably gotta actually swap my my gems around in my primary stat positioning but it's not really that big of a deal waking stats on the chest i got plus 200 speed on my bracers and then we got another socket you get the sockets from the vault by picking the tokens and then buying it from the vendor wafting devotion on my weapon and we're using the crafted belt too because it reduces crowd control by five percent and we have the socket on that as well Got the 177 intellect and 105 stamina on the pants. Plane runner's breeze on my boots. And then we got our haste enchant on our ring. There's the primary stat haste gem. And then the same thing on the other ring. And I'm using medallion and alacrity trinket. So now getting into the opener and rotation. Sometimes my opener will change. I'll have, um, it's, it's very situational. But let's say kind of best case scenario, if I'm going in, I'm zoning in, I put my port and my gate, so I've placed those. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna power siphon because we're gonna have the wild imps. We're gonna gain our charge. We'll be able to demon bolt depending on how many imps we have. And now we're full shards. I'll go for the vile fiend into dread stalkers. Then we have the grimoire fell guard into the tyrant cast, restun, drop obelisk. And then I'll push in for the coil and then big blade storm with the, the demonic strength. So now you have all that burst going on the target and you're gonna start rotating through your shards, your hand of gold dance. You can pull two shards because your dread stalkers are gonna come up and you might not have power siphon in time because you want to dreads on cooldown. 
And then whenever you need shards, you can just power siphon again. Boom, you get the demonic core procs. And now we're going to have all the cores from the dread stalkers and the imps going out. So I'll just rotate through them. Use my demon bolt when I need shards. Drop the hand of Gul'dan. Press it again. I try to go for the instant proc on the hand of Gul'dan, but if not, I'll just hard cast it. And then we just get it again. And then this is kind of like the rinse repeat. Your second go will come up with the Vile Fiend, and that's when you're going to drop your Obelisk with the next Vile Fiend, and then just continuously cycle through pets. So that's going to be for the big damage. You just constantly cycle, get as many Hand of Gul'dans as possible, and then Dreadstalkers on cooldown. And then in between, when you don't have shards, like see I have no core procs, I have nothing else to do, I can put up my Dooms. You'll be putting up your Dooms, and also your Amp Curses. I would prioritize this amp curse over the doom though. The doom is kind of lower priority. So you'll see I'm kind of doing that when I have nothing else to do. But if I have core procs and I could press hand of Gul'dan's, I'm definitely going through those rotating the shards. And then when there's nothing to do, we're refreshing the dooms on everything so we can get that shard gen coming in to constantly keep dropping the imps. And then now I'll talk about kind of briefly on how we're going to use defensive cooldowns and PvP. So, I generally like to use the shorter cooldowns first. The only thing is, I, I typically drop the Dark Pact. I mean, if you look at it, Demonic Portal is a shorter cooldown than Dark Pact. But a lot of the times, I like to Dark Pact kind of before porting. Or I'll port and Dark Pact. Just because, you know, it's so short. It's close to the same duration. So, I'm out in the fight. You want to just drop this Dark Pact very early. You do not want to be greedy with this Dark Pact. Your health should not be dropping under 80% before you're you're pressing this Dark Pact. You got to use it early. The higher you use it, the bigger the shield. So that's um, the first step. And then the next step we're going to have for defensives is Teleport. So we have Teleport, Coil, and then hopefully you have your port near your gate. So maybe you'll just get away with Dark Pacting and Porting. The next, um, the next resort if these cooldowns are not coming up again is to gateway so see i have like 10 seconds 10 seconds let's say it was an emergency and i didn't get my port back in time but i had to get away from the fight i needed to escape and i didn't want to just drop my unending resolve because that's you know super super long cooldown that on top of hellstone those are our like major major last resorts but now you see we have dark packed again that is available port we go through the same rotation oh look now we have no gateway okay Second rotations coming in. This is when we're going to trade the Unending Resolve and or potentially Hellstone, depending on how the fight goes. So we might have to use our Hellstone here. We have an awkward gap now because Dark Pack, 25 seconds. Port, 12 seconds. This is when it gets weird. You need to drop your crowd controls, stuns, fears, coils, kite as much as possible, and escape danger and damage because you don't have any defensives. So now we'll have our port back. So we can port out of danger, but still no dark pact yet so we're in a kind of crucial situation and that's when you'll kind of rotate in the hellstone or whatever because you know we'll get our dark pact then we'll hellstone or typically depending on your health you run a hellstone first if you're if you have your dark pact available because you want a hellstone set that health high and then dark pact because you're gonna get the, the bigger shield absorb all right thank you guys so much for watching this guide i hope it was helpful if you have any questions or suggestions on future guides don't forget to leave a like and comment and also subscribe because we're going to be having a ton more pvp content on this channel so thank you again and i will see you in the next video